Thank God for fantasy football. I'm Buster Brown of the show. It's called Redemption Rehab. And if you tuned in today, it's for one reason. It's because you want to start winning championships in fantasy football. Here we are on our website, fantasyfootballredemptionrehab.com. When you get a chance, check it out. Today, we're talking about running back by committee. There are teams in the NFL that approach this season with not just one running back, not with two, but with a group of players. In fantasy football, volume is king. But with these teams we're going to talk about today, they believe that a group of players will get the job done better than any one or two players. When you have a group of players, in fantasy football on the same team, it greatly diminishes their value. But every player who plays on Sundays has some value in fantasy football. So buckle up, get out your popcorn, and let's head over to the chalkboard and check out the facts. Okay, here we are checking out a running back by committee approach by the teams that like to utilize that system in the 2020 NFL season. On the left side of the screen over here is a great company. When you get a chance, check them out. It's called rtsports.com. On this website, we're going to talk about depth charts of each team. And on the right side of the screen over here, we're going to talk about average draft position, where players are going in your upcoming drafts in a 12-team PPR league on FantasyFootballCalculator.com. We're going to start today's conversation by heading over to RT Sports and checking out the Baltimore Ravens running back by committee, starting with this guy, Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram had a pretty good year last year. He had like 15 touchdowns, 10 rushing, 5 receiving. Most people would think, well, that's a workhorse. I got to have him. But let's take a look at it in depth. You can see he likes to run the ball. His handcuff is the rookie J.K. Dobbins out of Ohio State. This kid also is a three-down back. He's going to get some playing time this year. He's the heir apparent to Mark Ingram. I really like him a lot. Keep an eye on J.K. Dobbins. And don't be surprised if Gus Edwards gets some playing time. He's more of a short yardage guy. Might get some goal line carries. And they've also got another guy. His name is Justin Hill. And he's more of a scat back, smaller guy. He's going to get some playing time too. But that's not all they got rushing the ball. How about this guy? Lamar Jackson, the quarterback, league MVP. Pretty sure he rushed for over a thousand yards and a bunch of touchdowns. That takes away from the appeal of the running backs because when they get near the goal line, chances are Lamar Jackson's running it in, not one of our running backs. That diminishes their value. That's why Baltimore Ravens are considered a running back by committee team. They've got three or more players that they can use throughout the game to rush the ball. Let's take a look at some of the other players on their team. Marquise Brown and Miles Boykin are the two starting wide receivers. Expect to see Willie Sneed in there. He's a veteran. Uh, Only player that any of these players that I would even consider drafting is probably Marquise Brown. He had a decent year last year, but he does get hurt a lot. He's got a lot of soft tissue type stuff because he's a speed burner. He has big games, will get you 20 points, and then won't do nothing for a couple weeks. So be very careful with him. Miles Boykin is a possible breakout candidate. Uh, And I do like this Devin DuVernay. They drafted him this year. Don't be surprised if he comes on later in the season. But what I really like about these guys, besides their running attack, is this guy, Mark Andrews. I'm going to tell you right now, Mark Andrews, top five tight end uh, last year, and he's probably a top five tight end this year. 
He's going to have a big year. They've got Nick Boyle listed ahead of him. He's definitely a quality backup who can block and catch the ball around the end zone. But Mark Andrews is a top five tight end, and you should consider drafting him in your upcoming draft. As far as their offensive line goes, this is pretty good. They got two really good tackles in Ronnie Staley and Orlando Brown Jr. And the middle of this line is not bad. We're going to give them above average grade of B-. They also have some really good backups in here. Some guys that have been in the league like this guy for a long time. So expect them to blow some holes open for these group of running backs that we just talked about. So let's head over and check out where some of these guys are going on Fantasy Football Calculator dot com in a 12-man PPR league average draft position sheet okay as you can see over here the first guy that comes off the board is the quarterback Lamar Jackson coming off late second round if you go early quarterback wide receivers in your draft you're gonna need some running backs later in the draft and you'll be looking at guys like a Mark Ingram or if you get a chance, go to our website and check out our split running back. These are guys that uh, there's usually two running backs on a team, not three or four. And these guys go later in your draft too because they're also sharing carries. Remember, volume is king. The players we're talking about, running back by committee, they don't exactly get high volume. That's a problem. And at running back, you want workhorse running back. You get a chance to check out that video too on our website, Workhorse Running Back. But today we're talking about these guys and we're talking about the Baltimore Ravens and the main guy that runs the ball for them is Mark Ingram. As you can see here going at the end of the fourth round, beginning of the fifth, I think that's a good spot for him. If you could get him even later, I kind of like him somewhere in here in the middle end of the fifth round before DeAndre Swift. I do like Cream Hunt a little bit better. Um, but this is where you should be going in the fifth round. Uh, you can see Mark Andrews is on here also right there. He's the tight end for the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Uh, he's going in this area fourth round. I think if you could get Mark Andrews anywhere in the fourth or early fifth, good pick. Do it. Uh, he's going to have a good year if he stays healthy. He does have some health concerns because he, he is a diabetic. Um, and the COVID-19 thing uh, affects people with that condition. So ugh, it's a risk, but I do like him a lot. I think that's a good spot for these guys somewhere in here, late fourth, early fifth. Marquise Brown had him on a team last year, mm, had a bunch of good games, had a bunch of bad games. He does get hurt a lot, soft tissue, hamstring, ankle. He doesn't weigh a lot, but boy, is he fast. And they're going to use him to open up the field by throwing long passes to him. When you got a guy questionable going into Sunday every single week, it's hard to put him in your lineup. Uh, I just don't know if I would take him in round six. I'd probably wait to around seven or eight, but he'll probably be gone. And if you take Mark Ingram, got to have this guy, J.K. Dobbins. He's a rookie out of Ohio State. Kid's a three down back. Heir apparent to Mark Ingram, by the end of the season, if his kid's healthy, he could be a player. So if you take Mark Ingram, you better take J. Craig Dobbins. Because I'll tell you what, that's his handcuff. As far as the rest of these guys that were on, uh, that we talked about on the Baltimore Ravens, none of them are getting drafted in an average draft position sheet. So you can pick them up on the waiver wire first week after they've played their first game. Let's go take a look at another NFL team that uses the running back by committee approach, and it's the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, here we are looking at the Kansas City Chiefs. This team epitomizes running back by committee. They're going to use a lot of running backs. Why? They got a high-powered, fast-paced offense. They got a ton of playmakers. Running back is just part of the puzzle. Let's check it out. This guy here, this rookie from LSU, uh, he won a national championship with them, caught 50, 60 balls last year, maybe 70. Um, so he's the pass catching running back. So in a PPR league, he's going to go high. His name is Clyde Edwards Hilaire, but he is a rookie. Um, they say his backup is Darwin Thompson. These two are similar type of players, small scat back types. 
that like to catch the ball out of the backfield. Uh, a guy that's not listed on here is uh, DeAndre Washington. They picked him up as a free agent who used to play with the quarterback. We're going to talk about Patrick Mahomes in college. I would keep an eye on him. He could be the actual handcuff to Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And they've got another really good running back who might get the goal line carry. He's a bigger back. His name's Daryl Williams. So you got a lot to choose from here. That's the problem with uh, a running back by committee. You have to understand there's so many people that are, they're going to play at running back that it makes it difficult to draft just one or two from the same team because it could be one of any of these guys that leads the team in rushing. Uh, especially when you have a great quarterback like this guy, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, Super Bowl MVP, won a Super Bowl, league MVP, and he's only been playing for like three years. He got a big contract. I mean, half a billion dollars. So this kid is the real deal. Uh, he's going early in drafts. Uh, but that's not why you like it. You like this team not because of the running back, but because of the quarterback and these guys at wide receiver. Tariq Hill, first round pick. He might not be going there in every draft, but I like him in the first round. He is a speed burner. Very few people can catch this kid. He's that fast. They've got a veteran here in Sammy Watkins. Not a big fan of his. He's had health issues. Uh, he always starts the year out strong, and then he doesn't do anything, and then he plays well in the playoffs. So uh, he is somebody worth considering late in your drafts. The rest of these guys really like this guy, Miko Hardman. Don't be surprised if this guy has a breakout year. He is fast, and he's a playmaker. And don't be surprised if the coach uh, uses this guy to, to be a playmaker for them. I would consider drafting him late. Uh, the rest of these guys all have some talent. Marcus Robinson has some decent game. But you got to love this guy here, their tight end. Wow. Travis Kelsey, top one, top two tight ends. He's going early in drafts. It's worth the consideration. Uh, if you do take players like Travis Kelsey and Tariq Hill in the first round and maybe even Patrick Mahomes, uh, not saying it's a bad strategy, but you're going to need running backs later. So you'll be looking at the split backfields that we talked about in another video we have on our website called Split Backfield. Or you'll be looking at these running back by committee approach, which a lot of guys use when they go early wide receiver, tight end, quarterback in their drafts, and they don't have running backs to choose from until later. So running back by committee is the guys they usually end up drafting. And uh, when you look at this offensive line here, you know, Eric Fisher's really good. The right guard, left guard here, not sure about him. The center's pretty good. Uh, this is Osolome. They had to sign because the 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 good guard they had in the Super Bowl opted out because of COVID-19. And Mitchell Swartz has been around for a long time. He's a good right tackle. And these are some good players, Ramos. Remmers down here and you know a lot of these rankings these guys can all and have played so they're good players this is a b minus type of offensive line so they can protect patrick mahomes and they can't open holes up for clyde edwards hilaire who or whoever they have in there so let's take a look over on fantasy football calculator where some of these guys are going in the average draft position chart Okay, here we are on Fantasy Football Calculator checking out the average draft position chart for the Kansas City Chiefs. They won a Super Bowl, so a lot of their players are going early. First player off the board is the rookie running back. Why is he going so early? Well, a few weeks ago when we did another video on our workhorse running backs, Clyde Edwards Hilaire was all the way down here. But one of the running backs, a veteran who was going to start the season as the starter, Damian Williams, who had a good Super Bowl, possibly should have been MVP, but didn't get it, scored a ton of points in fantasy football, 30-some points. I've had him on my teams and won championships with him. He opted out because of COVID-19, so it's going to be a tough year in fantasy football. Having depth at running back, quarterback, wide receiver, and tight end is going to be a challenge. So... You know, we'll see how that all pans out this year. But this uh, running back here, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, is going uh, really early in drafts. I still have him as a late second round pick, but because of the uh, Damian Williams not playing, 
He's moved up into the first round. I I can't suggest you do it. I would take all these guys ahead of him. Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill. They're proven players that are going to score where you have an unknown factor and a rookie who had one good season at LSU. It was a pretty spectacular season. I mean, like, I think he caught 73 balls, scored a bunch of touchdowns, and he is undersized, and he's going to get beat up. So I can't suggest taking him to a late second round, but I do like Tyree Kill. Uh, if you can get him, that's a good pick. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, there's going to be somebody in your league that takes him early in your draft. Let him do it. Can't be taking quarterbacks this early with running backs and wide receivers. We go, we go into a draft with our priority list, and it's always running backs first, then wide receivers, then tight ends, and then quarterbacks. Always try to have at least three running backs, three wide receivers, and a tight end before I even consider drafting a quarterback, and you should too. However, if Patrick Mahomes does fall to you in the third or fourth round, get him. He's worth it, and he shouldn't be there. That's why you got to wait for players like Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey to fall to you in rounds they shouldn't be. Travis Kelsey's going to just sign a big contract, uh, $60 million, close to that and for the next four years so he's going to be around for a while and he's also the best of the best high powered offense that's why all these guys are going early uh, i would let travis kelsey fall to you in the third round here if you can help it uh taking him earlier than that well that's up to you depending upon your league scoring sometimes tight ends get a point and a half per reception uh when quarterbacks only get four points for a passing touchdown as opposed to six you should never take them early because they just can't score as many points as other players that are getting six points for a touchdown when they're only scoring four for a passing touchdown. So keep scoring in mind. Where are some of the other players going? Well, let's go down here and check it out. We told you about Miko Hardman. He's a wide receiver. Uh, we really like him this year. Sammy Watkins is another good receiver veteran uh, you could get him late in your drafts if you get him at the end of round 11 maybe even uh, beginning of round 12 as your fifth or sixth I mean I like Anthony Miller more I kind of like Sterling Shepard more but you know once you get in here I like John Brown more this is about where he should be going and here's the handcuff right here DeAndre Washington he's probably going to be the handcuff to Clyde Edwards Hilaire he may even start the season out as the starter why because he's a veteran He's played in all these games, and with the COVID-19, some of these rookies, hey, man, they're going to struggle because they didn't have an offseason, OTAs and training camp, and they got thrown into the mix. They might not know the playbook, which could get the quarterback killed on a blitz. So, John Dre Washington, veteran, if he makes the team, would be a good pickup. The other players we talked about, Darwin Thompson and uh, Darren Williams and even this Elijah McGuire, they're not on this anywhere, this, this average draft position anywhere, because no one's picking them. So you can probably pick them up on your waiver wire. If you do take uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, I would definitely pick up DeAndre Washington, and I'd probably pick up Darwin Thompson and put him on my bench too. That's the problem with these running back by committees. You end up with so many running backs on the same team, and it could be a different running back that you didn't even put on your team that gets all the carries. That's a problem. So let's head over and check out some other teams that use the running back by committee approach with uh, this team, the Los Angeles Rams. Okay, here we are checking out the Los Angeles Rams committee approach to the running game. Uh, this is why running back by committee is not a good thing. And the Los Angeles Rams who let Todd Gurley go because of salary cap issues now have this group of backs we don't know what to do with. No preseason. Uh, they drafted some rookies. So let's dive into it and check it out. It is, it is a mess. Uh, as you can see here, they've got the veteran Malcolm Brown as the starter. He could start the year out as the starter and probably will because they got to protect the quarterback. And this kid is a veteran, and I expect him to start the year out and get the goal line carry. But he's no Todd Gurley, and he's not being drafted in a lot of leagues. So if you go, you need a late running back, and this guy would be one of the guys I would probably take late in my draft because he's not even being drafted in a lot of leagues. 
and uh, he's probably going to get the start the year out. And I've had him on teams in the past. And when Todd Gurley went down, this was the guy I had as his handcuff. This guy here, Daryl Henderson, was the hot rookie last year, and everybody thought he was going to be the next big thing. Well, he was a bust, and he is definitely worth looking at this year. He is being drafted, and a lot of times rookies who don't have a good year, their rookie year, tend to have a tendency to come on in their second or third year, so he's a possibility. Uh, he's going late in your drafts, but the guy everybody's after is this guy out of Florida State. Cam Akers. We did a rookie preview on this guy. Check that out on our website. You can see what he did in college by just going there and checking out the rookie running backs. And we liked Cam Akers. And guess what? He's the guy everybody thinks is going to have a big year. Just like they thought Daryl Henderson would last year, but he didn't. That's why drafting rookies is a problem. But Cam Akers is a decent player. can play all three downs. Not suggesting you draft any of these guys unless they fall to you later in your draft. They've got Jared Goff uh, as quarterback. Had a good couple seasons, then not so good last year. Not sure why. Probably the offensive line wasn't very good. Well, the offensive line's not very good this year. Uh, and he lost a couple good players. Todd Gurley, all pro. Aging all pro. And they lost Brandon Cook. Great wide receiver. Been around for a long time. Didn't get a thousand yards last year, but did most years before that, and was a speed burner. Both of those guys were former All Pros. Well, they're not on this team anymore. So these guys aren't the same Rams that we knew. And Jared Goff uh, isn't going to be able to run the ball. His offensive line might not be able to protect them. So this could be a rough year for the Rams. Uh, as far as wide receivers, these are the two guys you're going to be looking at. Cooper Cup, love him. I think he's the number one. And Robert Woods, he's a good second or third wide receiver you should have on your team. Both are going early in drafts, and I like them a lot. And they can catch anything close to them. I consider drafting both of them. Uh, I do like this rookie, Van Jefferson, although he is uh, recovering from a foot injury. Uh, it was pretty severe, so he might not even start the season. He's not getting drafted, but you may want to watch out for him. And when he comes back, his dad was uh, a coach in the NFL and played football for the John Jefferson for the San Diego Chargers back in the day. And John Jefferson was a good player, and he taught his kid how to be a good wide receiver. So keep an eye out for that name later in the season. As far as wide receivers uh, that I'm would be on my radar. Josh Jefferson, Josh Reynolds. I'm not 100% sure I like him. He's supposed to take over the uh, Brandon Cooks role, so he could be a sleeper late in your drafts. He's not being drafted either, but he might be someone you want to consider late or first week of your waiver wires. But these are the two guys that could probably take the place of everybody that's missing. Tyler Igby. We we did a preview on tight ends, sleeper tight ends we liked uh, on our website. We mentioned this guy. In his last five games in 2019, this guy had uh, like 45 catches in five games. Didn't score a lot of touchdowns, but still was catching eight, nine balls a game. And that's amazing. Uh, this guy was hurt, Gerald Everett. He had some amazing games last year also. So I expect him to be a better player this year, too, and he can play. So I think they'll use that 12 package where they put both tight ends on the field and you know pretend like they're going to run the ball, then they throw to the tight end. So these guys could both have good games. Uh, they might have good years, good games. We'll see. Um, as far as offensive line goes, they got one guy I really like, and it's this veteran, Andrew Whitworth, who used to play for the Bengals and has played for the Rams for the last three or four years. Boy, this guy's no spring chicken. He's been around a long time. He's a massive individual, too, and he's still pretty good. He was a Pro Bowler last year. I can't, the rest of these guys, I'm not buying any of these guys. I mean, that's, this is definitely C minus, uh, below average. Uh, they didn't even improve with these guys. So they lose Whitworth, which could happen with a veteran. I'll tell you what, this is, this is, in, they're in trouble. So I got to tell you, not high on this team. I do like Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. Uh, I thought, Jared Goff might be a sleeper earlier in the year. I put him in as one of my sleeper quarterbacks because they're not going to be able to run the ball well, so they have to throw the ball. So he might be a consideration, although last year he was terrible. And uh, 
Let's go over to the average draft position uh, chart over on Fantasy Football Calculator and see where some of these guys are going. Okay, here we are on Fantasy Football Calculator checking out where some of the guys in the Rams are going. As you can see here, Todd Gurley is no longer on the team. He's playing for Atlanta. If he was playing for the Rams, he would probably be going even later because the Atlanta offensive line is pretty good and they got a better offense, um, mostly because of their line's better. And Todd Gurley's going earlier. Well, he's gone. And as you can see down here, uh, Brandon Cooks is no longer on the team. He's in Houston, and he's going to probably their best receiver in Houston, seeing how they let go DeAndre Hopkins. So he might be someone you want to consider later in round seven or eight, but they're gone. So who do we have? We got Cooper Cup, which is going in round four. It's never a good I thing when in fantasy football when your first player is going in the middle of round four. The Cooper Cup is someone I'd be taking there, boy. I think he should be more in round three. This is a good spot for Robert Woods. I think Robert Woods, uh, I would probably take A.J. Brown, D.K. Medcuff, D. Oh, Chark. I would probably be taking somewhere in here, Robert Woods, fifth round, maybe even later. But uh, this might be a little bit too early for me because I like all these guys. He's a young, up-and-coming player. Robert Woods been around for a long time. Even though he had a good year last year, he only had a couple touchdowns. So that's a little early for me. As you can see here, here's Cam Akers. He's the rookie running back out of Florida State. Uh, end of round six, like it comes down here, round five, six. If you could get Cam Akers in here, a lot of people like James White more, veteran running back. Ronald Jones is unproven. I would probably take those guys ahead of him. But when you get between J.K. Dobbins and Cam Akers, it comes down to volume. And I'd probably have him in round seven. So if Cam Makers falls to you in a draft, that's where I'd be taking him. But I wouldn't reach on him because we don't know. He's not going to play any preseason games, so we don't know. It's an unknown factor. And rookies have a tendency to struggle their first year. It's probably a situation I'll avoid altogether. So if he falls to you late in the draft, that's where I'd be taking him. Uh, like I told you, Tyler Higby had a pretty decent end of the year. Uh, came on strong. If you had him on your team at the end of the year, you probably won some playoff games. I do like him. That's a good spot for him around 8 and 9. Daryl Henderson's the rookie week from last year who might be the handcuff to Cam Akers or Mac Brown, depending upon who the starter is. Uh, he might be somebody worth throwing on your bench after round 10. Usually comes down round 10 or 11. So if you're in a 20-round draft and people take a break after round 10 a lot of people are going to be all over daryl henderson coming back into the draft after the break and you could always pick up their quarterback jared goff just about any time during a draft he will have some good games and then there'll be some games that he'll struggle I'm sure he'll struggle against san francisco uh they got a pretty good defense so you got to play them twice a year so that's it for the los angeles rams we've got uh three more teams we're going to look at so stick with us and the next team we're going to take a peek at is New England Patriots. Okay, here we are checking out the running back by committee over in New England. Well, this team looks like a mess. It's amazing that uh, they lose Tom Brady and this team totally is not the same team. And I'm not, I don't have high hopes for them. It's one of the teams I might avoid altogether. But every player has value in fantasy football if they're playing on Sunday. And I do see a lot of value on this team simply because their players are falling on draft boards. Uh, the main guy you want on this team, uh, as far as running back, might have been Sonny Michel. He's falling in draft boards because he had surgery in the offseason. It's taking its time healing. He's had knee inju injuries in the past, so we're not sure what's going to happen with him. If he falls in your draft, he might be worth taking because eventually he'll be healthy. A lot of people like Damian Harris, kid out of Alabama. He's healthy, but he's in his second year, so whether he's going to pan out or not, people are guessing, but don't be surprised if Damian Harris is the guy in New England. And then you got veteran Lamar Miller, who tore his ACL last year and early in the season, maybe even preseason, and he signed with New England, and uh, he's a veteran running back. So when we talk about running back by committee, it gets worse because you got the best of all of them, James White. Uh, he's pretty good pass receiving running back. Might be the first New England coming off the draft board. Uh, and he'll catch five, six balls, four, five, six balls so uh, every game. And I expect them to throw the ball to him a lot. And he's a veteran. And you got Rex Burkhead who does the same thing. And he's a 
goal line carry guy catches the ball in the backfield gets you some tough yards so all these guys are going to play when we talk about running back by committee this epitomizes what exactly what we're talking about who's going to get the ball in any given week who's going to lead the team in rushing who's going to get the touchdowns we don't know nobody does and if you look at the quarterbacks up here this is the guy here everybody's talking about cam newton He'll probably be the starter. Stidham's in his uh, third year or so, maybe even fourth year. Uh, he's probably not going to beat out Cam Newton. And even Brian Hoyer is a better quarterback than Jared Stidham. But we'll see what happens there. Uh, who gets the starting job, we don't know. As far as wide receivers, I mean, of course, they've got decent wide receivers. If they had better wide receivers, Tom Brady would still be there. We just talked about their quarterbacks in New England. And for 20 years, we've been talking about Tom Brady. Well, he's not there no more. Eh, I, don't, I don't see New England winning a lot of games, personally, but they are coached by Hall of Famers, uh, Bill Belichick, so we'll see. So their running back situation might want to avoid, quarterback situation you might want to avoid. But as far as uh, wide receivers, got to love Julian Edelman, man. Kick, just a playmaker. He's going late in drafts. Take him. Can't be, you know, if he's your third or fourth wide receiver, that's pretty damn good because he's an all pro, finished in the top 10 last year with Tom Brady throwing them the ball. This kid here, Nikhil Harry, look, I'm going to tell you what, he was a rookie last year and Tom Brady didn't trust him, but they have no choice to trust him because he's going to play. And he's a big kid, he's like 6'3, 6 in that area, and he's a good wide receiver. So I would consider drafting him. Of course, Mohamed Sanu is a veteran, he played for Cincinnati, then Atlanta, now he's in New England. Coming off surgery, I think it was an ankle thing, I'm not sure. But uh, he's not going to get drafted, but he might be somebody you want to pick up later in the season. And that's far as it on wide receivers. Not drafting any of these tight ends, just not uh, people that I would consider drafting. And they're not going to get drafted in your league. And the offensive line, once again, is, you know, that's C plus, a little bit above average. Isaiah wins decent left tackle. Tune's a good guard. Andrews is a good center. Shaq Mason's a good guard. Problem they had is they gave a guy an extension at right tackle. He's a good right tackle and he, he opted out. COVID-19 is not going to be there. So they got a hole in their right tackle that I'm sure one of these guys will fill. And they'll be decent offensive line. So they are they do have some value on this team. Running back by committee approach is New England's way of doing things. So let's head over to the uh, Fantasy Football Calculator and check out their average draft position chart and see where some of these guys are going. Okay, here we are in Fantasy Football Calculator checking out the average draft position for the New England Patriots. As you can see here, James White's first guy off the board and he's not going to the end of round six, almost round seven. That's terrible in fantasy football. You don't have a single person on your whole team going to the end of round six, beginning of round seven. That's terrible. But that's the situation we're in. No more Rob Gronkowski, no more Tom Brady. And I, as far as I'm concerned, no more Super Bowls for Bill Belichick. But this is the first guy going, James White. People at Fantasy Football Calculator to do these mock drafts are saying this is the best player on the team. If you want to get James White uh, later in your draft, round six or seven, be a good pick. Because uh, maybe you went in these early rounds, maybe you went with uh, wide receivers, quarterbacks, tight ends, and you're stuck with uh, maybe you don't have another running back besides the guy you drafted early. You know, you may have to go with some of these running back by committee guys. James White would be a good pick, especially in a PPR league, because he'll catch 60, 70 balls in a season as much as any wide receiver for sure and this guy here Julian Edelman man this guy is just a football player came into the league as a quarterback from Kent State and he turned out to be possibly a Hall of Fame wide receiver definitely is Hall of Fame fantasy football wide receiver and he's gonna probably have a good year if he stays healthy but he's no spring chicken if you could get Julian Edelman anywhere in this area where I have him marked in round seven that's a steal He's a good player, and you should get him. As you can see here, I got Tom Brady marked. He's gone. He don't play for them no more. I put him on there just to see what you guys would think, but he's gone. We knew that. Um, Sonny Michelle is the uh, running back. God, he, if he's healthy, maybe he eventually comes back healthy. I wouldn't draft him at all, and not especially in round eight. Maybe if he fell to me in round 11 or 12, I would do it. 
but uh, he's just not healthy, and I'm just not 100% sure which one of these guys is going to be the running back on any given week. So it's kind of like a wasted pick that early. You see Cam Newton's going in rounds 11. Damian Harris would probably be the backup or handcuffed to either James White or Sonny Michelle. He's going down here in round 12, second-year player. He's got some skills. Might be the man. Who knows? Might be worth taking late in the draft. This is where some people are going. I really like Nikhil Harry. Round 14, let's say you got four or five receivers on your team and you want one more, take Nikhil Harry. I do like him, and I do like all these other guys here that aren't playing for New England just as much as I like Nikhil Harry. So when you're drafting running wide receivers, like all these guys are really good, especially even Hunter Renfro down here. When you're going too many wide receivers early in a draft, it's a mistake because you can get them not only on your waiver wire week one, but you can get them later in your draft where there are no tight ends, there's no tight ends worth taking down here, and there's no running backs that are going to make a difference. Most likely. Tight ends are gone, running backs are gone, quarterbacks are all that's available, and some of these wide receivers. So don't make the mistake of taking too many wide receivers early. That's why we prioritize running backs like we do. That's why we're doing a video on running backs, our third video, which you, when you get a chance, you should go check out our workhorse running back video. That will really help you. And you should check out our split backfield video on our website, fantasyfootballredemptionrehab.com. Those videos will help you along with this one. There's another couple teams out there that do the running back by committee. And the next team we're going to talk about is another Super Bowl contending team, and it's the San Francisco 49ers. Okay, here we are checking out the San Francisco committee running backs that are pretty good I'm just gonna tell you this is why I didn't call them a split back field or a workhorse because you got three guys here that are gonna run the ball and all three guys especially with the coach that uh, is coaching them they like to utilize the running back by committee approach always have um, so this guy here Raheem Mostart when going in the last season no one even knew who he was he was a special team player but as the season went on he became a very good player and he helped me win a championship. So I do like him. However, there's a problem. Is he gonna be the starting running back all year? Well, we don't know. Because this guy's pretty good. Tevin Coleman, he used to play for Atlanta, didn't get a lot of playing time there, but always seemed to, uh, when he did, play well. So that's why San Francisco signed him. He got hurt last year in the playoffs and hurt his shoulder, and but was a good player when he did play. And then you got Jared McKinnon, who nobody knows who this guy is because he used to play for Minnesota, signed a big contract probably two, three years ago with San Francisco, and San Fr he's been hurt for two years. Two years, and they've still kept him around for one reason. He can catch the ball in the backfield. He's a pretty good player. Coming in the league, I remember the NFL Combine, he put up, uh, I think, 32 reps on the bench. Um, he out bench press most offensive linemen so kick is a strong boy and he's a good running back so you got three guys which one's gonna have a big game i don't know if you draft raheem mozart it could be tevin coleman could cost you a playoff game running back by committee that's what these guys are quarterback jimmy garoppolo not sold on him he did take him to the super bowl a lot of people pin that loss on him not sure why I watched the whole game. He did miss an open wide receiver for a touchdown at the end of the game. Would have won the game, but it is what it is. And he's got some good backups. These guys should be playing somewhere, but they're not. As far as uh, wide receivers, not sure what's the deal here. Uh, you look at this wide receiving core, you think, well, Debo Samuels. Yeah, I like him. We recommended you drafted him last year if you watched our show. And he's hurt. He's hurt. I, I don't think you'll see him week one. Uh, he had surgery on his foot. Something was broke. Uh, they're not going to rush him back, which is good news for George Kittle, their tight end that they just signed, because when Debo Samuels wasn't playing last year, George Kittle had his best game. But he's not going to start the – Debo Samuels is not going to start the year out with uh, starting the first game probably. They're not going to rush him back either. So they're counting on all these guys. And none of these guys have done anything. This is a rookie, Brandon Ayuk. He's a good player. He's going to be returning kicks and punts, and he's going to be starting wide receiver. These guys have done nothing. 
Kendrick Bourne's caught some touchdowns. Jalen Hurd, nothing. Trent Taylor's been hurt. I kind of like him, but he's been hurt. And Dante Pettis didn't see the field much last year. They didn't go out and sign anybody, but I do expect them to do it. They're going to have to because this wide receiving core is not that great, especially if Debo Samuels is going to miss a month. It's terrible. They're going to have to rely on this guy, one of the best tight ends in the league. Just signed a $60 million contract, maybe more. Might have been 75. I can't remember. But he's the best. Him, Travis Kelsey. I mean, you, you decide. Who's going to have the better year? I don't know. Kansas City's got a lot of people to throw the ball to. As far as I'm concerned, San Francisco just has George Kill and those running backs we talked about. As far as offensive lines go, you got to hand it San Francisco. It's first A minus I'm going to give to any team. They got a good offensive line. Trent Williams came over from Washington. He's a good left tackle. Hasn't played a lot in the last two years, but I'll tell you right now, nobody's going to deny the fact he's going to be a good, a all pro every year. He's that good. And you got Tomlinson, good guard. Richburg, good center. Compton, good guard. Mike McGlinchey, good right tackle. All five guys play well. They get an A-. minus. They're going to blow some holes open. They got some really good backups here that can play, that come in, fill in for these guys if they're hurt. Love this offensive line, which is why you got to love the running back by committee that these guys have. Which one's going to have the big game every week? I don't know. It's that difficult to tell. So let's head over to Fantasy Football Calculator and see where these guys are being drafted that might help us decide who we like. Okay, here we are at Fantasy Football Calculator taking a look at San Francisco 49ers. And as you can see here, first person off the board is George Kittle. Uh, good spot for him. If you get uh, George Kittle in the third round, good pick. I would do it all day. He's a good player. Um, as you can see here, the next person off the board is Raheem Mozart. We told you he helped me win a championship last year. I didn't draft him, but I did pick him up on the waiver wire. And here he is going around five. He got a contract, kind of an incentive thing. He was going to hold out, but he decided not to. So what they did was they reworked his contract. He can make another two and a half million dollars, which is fair. Now his contract's worth five million instead of two and a half. And uh, he might be the guy I draft, but I'm not sure I would draft him in round five because this guy here, Tevin Coleman, is going in round eight. Which one of these two is going to get the start every week? I don't know. Nobody does. Kyle Shanahan knows. That's the coach for San Francisco, but we don't. And both of them can play well. So maybe if you go in your early rounds, you know, you're going a lot of wide receivers and tight ends up in here. And you decide, hey, I'll just take San Francisco's whole backfield, which is all three of these guys. It's three of maybe your six guys you'll have on your 20-man roster. Hey, uh, you'll just have to figure out which one to play every week. Uh, it's not a good strategy, but hey, sometimes things happen in the draft and you have to improvise. But I would definitely have Raheem Mostert and his handcuffed Tevin Coleman on my team if I was going to take one or the other. As you can see here, Debo Samuel's going around eight. He's hurt. Uh, if you're taking him, it's because you're going to play him. He's going to play later in the season. I don't know, know when. They're not even saying. So I do like him. He's a good player. He was going up here in round five and six, but injuries. Now he's dropped to round eight, maybe nine. And your draft could go even later. I would take him, stash him on your bench, especially if you got four wide receivers ahead of him. You don't have to worry about playing him until bye weeks, and by then he should be back. Other people, Brandon Ayuk down here, wide receiver. Can't suggest you draft him. Don't know anything about him other than I know he's a good wide receiver, a rookie. Uh, has a lot to prove. He's a good kickoff returner, good punt returner. So we'll see if he gets any playing time. Jimmy Garofalo, you can get him anywhere in your draft if you want a decent quarterback. Just doesn't have a lot of receivers. Might go undrafted in your league. And you got this guy that we talked about, hasn't played in three years, Jarrett McKinnon. Hey, man, they were really like this guy for some reason like I said he's a good football player but he's had the same knee injury for two straight years they said it's finally healthy and it wouldn't surprise me if you took a flyer on this guy late in the draft he ended up maybe as your last running back on your team he turned out to be a decent player if he's healthy and that could happen so that's your San Francisco 49 okay we got one more team we're gonna take a look at and it's the Washington football team Okay, here we are taking a look at the Washington football team. Sounds odd to say that, but we got to be politically correct, so let's just make it what it is. It's no longer the Redskins, and probably a good thing. Anyways, uh, if you come over here and 
This team is not very good. Uh, taking anybody on this team is a risk. Uh, they are well coached. A former coach for Carolina is over there now, and he's no nonsense. Uh, if you look at their committee backfield here of Adrian Peterson, uh, he's been around for over a decade, former MVP, probably not the same as he's been in years past, but this guy is like a superhuman being or something because he's still playing football at a high level. Didn't have a bad season last year. He's probably going to start the season as the starting running back for the Washington football team. So there's value there. This kid here, Antonio Gibson, is like the Swiss Army knife kind of kid. Uh, I think he played quarterback and running back and wide receiver, and they drafted him. I might have been out of Kentucky, and he's a good player. He's getting drafted, so keep an eye on him. Don't know much about him because we're not going to get to see him play in preseason. And you got Bryce Love. This kid was a first-round pick, but he blew his knee out in college, came back to Stanford his senior year. Probably should have went in his junior year in the NFL draft, was a Heisman Trophy candidate, and had this severe knee injury. He hasn't played football in a couple years. So we'll see where he is once the season starts. So keep an eye on that guy, Bryce Love, because I did like him a lot in college. As far as quarterback goes, uh, Dwayne Haskins, not buying into him, or Kyle Allen. They are getting the former Kansas City Chiefs quarterback to hurt his knee back. Uh, wouldn't count on him either. Um, as far as wide receivers, there's one man, one man only I would even consider drafting is Terry McLaurin. He's a kid out of Ohio State, had a good rookie year, he's probably going to be do better this year. He's very fast with good hands. He's worth considering for sure. If you don't like anybody on this team, that would be the guy I would consider. And he might be the only Redskin I would even consider drafting. And he would be the only Washington player I would consider drafting. And as far as these other wide receivers, uh, this kid Sims plays well at times. Trey Quinn, a lot of people like him. I'm not sure. Dontrell Inman's been on a lot of teams in the past, whether it's the Chargers or the Colts. I mean, now he's over here. I don't know how good he's going to be. Keep an eye on this uh, Antonio Gandy Golden. I'll tell you right now, I really liked him in the in the combine. A lot of people liked him in the uh, All Star College game, so he could be a player. And keep an eye on that name. And if you see something happening during the season with him, you better pick him up on your waiver wire. As far as tight ends go, I wouldn't take any of these guys. I mean, this Thaddeus Moss is Randy Moss's son. He's hurt, but he might be healthy uh, sometime during the season. And the rest of these guys, uh, like I said earlier, every player who suits up on Sunday has some potential value and maybe one of these guys will come on and be a good tight end i can't recommend drafting any of them totally waiver wire type of stuff once the season starts and when you look at this offensive line they lost their tackle to san francisco and the best player is brandon shreve this kid is an all pro he's gonna he's a mauler He's definitely an A-plus kind of guy, but I can't suggest this offensive line being anything but C-minus, less than average, because the rest of these guys aren't that great, and their backups are. This is going to be a struggle for this these people to find continuity here, so they're, I think they're going to struggle to run the ball. Might be best to avoid this team altogether. So let's go over to Fantasy Football Calculator and check out where some of these guys are going on the average draft position chart. Okay, here we are checking out the Washington football team on Fantasy Football Calculator's draft board. And the first Washington Redskin coming off the board is this guy, Terry McLaurin. He had a pretty good rookie season. He's a fast guy. He's going into mid-round five. That's where you should be taking him. Uh, I would definitely take him probably in that round somewhere because I do like these guys up here as much or more but then I'd be considering him uh, that's a good round for him if he falls any further than that you definitely should take him this kid Antonio Gibson's the running back we were talking about he's a rookie Swiss Army knife kind of guy like I said he played a bunch of positions I think it was out of Kentucky including quarterback including running back including wide receiver so what they're gonna do with this guy is kind of like a gadget thing I would imagine and he might might turn out to be a decent fantasy football player if not this year maybe next uh then of course you got adrian peterson down here 
He's probably going to start the season out as a starting running back. So if you need a running back, maybe a number three running back later in your draft, he might be worth picking up. Uh, I'm going to avoid most of these guys. And this kid might be a flyer down here, Bryce Love. We told you he's been hurt the last couple of years, but when he was at Stanford, he was a good player. And since they had to cut Darius Geis, who was their starter for domestic violence, um, kid made a mistake. He's going to pay the price. He got cut and opens the door for somebody else. Might be Bryce Love because when he was healthy, he was really good. So he might be worth a fly or a pick up on the waiver wire after week one. Okay, there you have it. There's our running back by committee teams. Uh, if you take any of those players, you should know that uh, there could be a lot of running backs competing for time on those teams. Uh, let's take a look at something else I wanted to show you. This is a article written by Jeff Parr over at RT Sports and he did it in May as you can see over here and this is him with probably his son doing their podcast and up here as you'll see is a thing called running back strength of schedule. I like to look at this every year because if you read this article right here it's really good and it tells you who has favorable schedules for running backs in fantasy football. So when you get a chance, you know, maybe pause this and read this article right here. And let's head down a little bit further on this article and I'll show you the strength of schedule, who these guys think have easy schedules and who these guys think have difficult schedules for running backs. Let's take a look at that chart right now. Okay, here's the chart that Jeff Parr and the guys over at RT Sports came up with. And if you're at the top of this list, that means you have a difficult schedule. So Seattle, the Rams, Buffalo, Miami, Kansas City. As you can see, this is their top 10. So they're suggesting that these teams here that are in the top 10, they're going to have a difficult time running the ball based upon their schedule. Teams that are going to have an easy time are down here. If you look at these 10 teams, Indianapolis, Minnesota, Chicago, Tampa Bay. These teams here all have an easier schedule against the run, meaning their running backs basically are going to have an easier time scoring points uh, at the bottom of the list than the teams at the top of the list. I just wanted to show that to you because it is an important part of fantasy football. It's called Running Back Strength of Schedule, and it was written by the guys over at RT Sports, and his name is Jeff Parr. Good job, Jeff. Okay, there you have it. There's what we think about Running Back by Committee. We gave you everything you need to know to help you win championships in fantasy football. If you want to know more about Running Backs, come on to our website, fantasyfootballredemptionrehab.com come on down here and check out our 2020 workhorse position players like our running backs our split backfield and videos like the one you just watched will help you be able to navigate through the puzzle of fantasy football in 2020 i'm buster brown the show is called redemption rehab good luck